Diffusion Tensor Imaging. This one has uh, gained a lot of attention because it produces nice, colorful, pretty pictures. Uh, and if you've seen a diffusion tensor scan, they look really cool. They'll show, uh, and really what a diffusion tensor, it looks at the white matter of the brain, so it looks at the axons themselves. So if you see a diffusion tensor scan, it'll have these colorful patterns that follow like individual axon tracks, and they look amazing. And so what this is looking at is actually the diffusion or the flow of water molecules either perpendicular to or in alignment with the axon or, uh, or sorry, in alignment or parallel to the axon or perpendicular to the axon. The idea is that if you have this axon, which is like a long tube, and inside that tube you have structural proteins called microtubules and neurofilaments. And those are what allow the cell to communicate within itself. So to send nutrients from one end of the cell to the other, or signaling proteins from one end of the cell to the other, it has to flow along these neurofilaments and microtubules. So you'll also have like flow and diffusion of water. If the axon is intact, if this tube is intact and undamaged, the thought is that water will typically flow only along the axon. It can't flow perpendicular because it's constrained by the borders of the axon itself. So you get this, this parallel diffusion type of thing. Okay. In the event of injury, or at least the theory is that Swelling in the axon will cause all sorts of haphazard water movement. Uh, breakdown of the myelin sheath of the axon itself will will cause or will prevent the constrainment of water, which will allow it to flow out of the axon. So again, you get more perpendicular or radial diffusion happening after an injury has taken place, and you get less of just one directional um, water flow. So that's the idea, is that if there's damage to these microtubules, this microstructural damage, you wouldn't see it on an MRI or a CT scan, but if you looked right into the axon and were able to look at the flow of water, you could potentially pick up this, what's called microstructural damage, meaning it's below you know, the structure, it's internal cellular damage, um, not necessarily full-on brain damage. So DTI has been promising for this reason because it can look right at the axons themselves, and this has been thought to be a, a deeper axon white matter injury for a long time. Um, so that's the thought, but here's some problems, and I have some studies to talk about. Uh, this is a systematic review that was done in 2017 by Breton Askin, and what they uncovered is that these same findings in DTI are found in a number of different issues. So uh, number one, um, low socioeconomic status, patients with low socioeconomic status will have similar patterns of diffusion tensor findings as patients with concussion. Interesting. Patients with major depressive disorder will have similar findings as diffusion tensor imaging. Uh, patients with ADHD will have similar findings as concussion uh, on their diffusion tensor scans. Another study by Wild et al. in 2018. I'm just going to read this quote. When compared to an orthopedically injured group, meaning somebody with an injury somewhere else in their body, concussion showed no differences in diffusion metrics within 96 hours or three months after injury. However, both groups, concussion and orthopedic injury, showed differences from controls. So when you compare somebody with an orthopedic injury to somebody with a concussion, there's no difference. Injury in general may cause changes in their diffusion metrics. Pain may cause changes in their diffusion metrics. But when you compare each one of them to somebody without pain and a normal healthy, it, there shows differences. So a lot of the studies that are done using diffusion tensor are actually flawed in their design because what they do is they look at somebody with a concussion and somebody with nothing. So automatically there's differences. When we start comparing concussion to other things like depression, like orthopedic injuries, like chronic pain, like whatever else, you see that there really is no difference. So what are we really looking at? I'm going to continue with this. Overall, the results indicate that both groups of patients with traumatic injuries, regardless of whether the injury resulted in head injury, exhibited similarly altered subacute diffusion characteristics in the white matter regions compared with the non-injured comparison group, and that these differences generally persisted three months later. It may be that trauma-related issues obscure or confound differences that are attributed to head injury itself. 
methods to decrease the variability in measurement and increase the sensitivity of neuroimaging to change will be necessary to better discern the effects of head injury. And actually, there was just a recent study that came out. Uh, I can't remember where it was published, but it came out recently and just said, we should not be using diffusion tensor imaging yet to provide individual diagnostic, prognostic, or management decisions. Because once you take a DTI image, just because you see something doesn't mean that it's concussion. Because it could be a whole bunch of other things, and we have no idea uh, which one it is. So again, tough.